الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سورة عم is by consensus a Meccan surah so in the in the uh, in the classes or the sessions of tafsir when we address a certain whenever we address a surah we're going to speak about the type of the surah was it whether it's Meccan or Medinan the name of the surah and the uh, reason of revelation if it exists uh, and then we will give the uh, tafsir of the surah surah uh, amma is, is a Meccan uh, surah its name it has two names it's either amma as the first uh, word in the uh, surah is uh, or annaba meaning the news or the event and this word is also uh, mentioned in the second verse عَنِ النَّبَأِ الْعَظِيمِ right uh, and uh, the reason uh, of revelation as Ibn Abbas uh, may Allah be pleased with him stated and this was mentioned by different scholars uh, like Al-Qurtubi for example Rahmatullah Ali he said uh, the Quraysh were uh, whenever the Quran was being sent down upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam they were uh, discussing amongst themselves themselves some uh, rejected and denied and some uh, accepted so Allah azza wa jal revealed uh, this surah for those who were denying the message of Muhammad uh, sallallahu alayhi wasallam Allah azza wa jal starts uh, by asking a question as a way of condemning and rebucking the people of Quraysh, those who were denying and rejecting the message of Muhammad sallallahu It's a, a very, as we mentioned in the, in the session of the introduction of tafsir, it's a very short but aggressive tone verse. About what are they asking one another? What are they debating about? What are they denying? About the great news or event. Over which they are in disagreement. Imam al-Shaqiti rahmatullahi alayhi stated that Al-Naba' the event mentioned in the second verse the scholars had different opinions but he said that the predominant opinion about it is that it is referring to Yawm Al-Qiyamah the day of judgment and resurrection because Allah Azza wa Jal listed after that evidences uh, about resurrection and after that clearly mentioned the day of judgment and detailed the speech about the day uh, of judgment then allah azza wa jal again in a very aggressive uh, style kalla sawfa thumma kalla sayalamun no they are going to know and then again repeats then no they are going to know this is the meccan style short and aggressive why because it is addressing those who are rebellion who are denying who are rejecting the word of allah the message of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam allah is threatening them that they will know the type of knowledge as shaykh al utaymin said is that is referred to here is that when they see and live the actual resurrection and accountability and it is then when they will discover their utter loss and realize the truthfulness of the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah azza wa jal repeats the threat in two consecutive verses to add to their fear because some of them, though denied, yet deep inside, were sure 
that these words, this message cannot be from Muhammad وسلم, and it had to be something divine from the Creator. After this, Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, in, in the following segment of verses, Allah Azza wa Jal lists uh, bounties from His creation, some of the cosmic signs that reflect His might, His ability to create in order to prove his ability to resurrect and hold people to account. As if Allah Azza wa Jal is sending a message by this, saying, if your minds are denying and refusing to accept resurrection and the day of account because it's a matter of the unseen, well, how can you then deny the cosmic signs all around you that prove each one of them proves the magnificence of Allah Azza wa Jal and His ability to create and a proof that He is the only deserving God to be worshipped and that He is the Creator and therefore is able to put you to death and resurrect you and hold you to account and recompense each one of you. In verse 6, Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادًا Now where do people live? They live on earth. Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, Have we not made the earth a resting place? Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen said, Allah paved it and did not make it. It's neither rough where they cannot walk on it or cultivate it, nor is it too soft when it's useless. It is just suitable for people's lives. Imam Al-Qurtubi said, This verse proves to them his ability to resurrect them because one who is able to create this great creation, the earth, is certainly able to create something smaller, which is mankind. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says in the following verse, وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادَ And the mountains as states to stabilize the land and balance the earth. You know, one can't help but be astonished when he looks at a mountain. I mean, for those who've been on top of mountains, like myself, for example, when, when you look at it from down, and then when you climb up and look down from top, you can't help but glorify Allah. You can't help but go down and drop in sujood. It is something that is simply stunning, the creation of the mountains. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ azwaja," And we created you in pairs. Pairs here, azwaja. Uh, different scholars interpreted that to mean different things like Ibn Atiyah said different in their colors uh, they're different in their languages and so on uh, Imam Al-Qurtubi said there are males and females there are tall people, short people uh, handsome people not very handsome people I don't want to say ugly people right? but you know so this is the difference now what is so amazing about this when, when the, the speech is addressing the kuffar, why is this so important? Well, we all know and they, they also knew that we all came from Adam and Hawa. So the origin is one. So having these branches being so different, though the origin is one, is indeed a sign of ability and it is indeed a sign that the one who created these humans is capable of bringing them back to life and resurrect them. Then Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتًا And we made your sleep 
a means of rest. See, if, if we were to be awake all the time, we lose power and strength and we simply collapse. So Allah Azza wa Jal, out of mercy, out of mercy decreed that we feel sleepy and out of mercy decreed that in order, us, in order for us to rest, we have to sleep and we do sleep. If you only know what it means not to be able to sleep, you will appreciate the bounty of sleep. There are people who take pills in order to be able to go to sleep. They just can't go to sleep. They're deprived. One of my neighbors could not sleep at night. And all he could do is stay up all night and then he would collapse by morning. And his cycle was reversed. I advised him many times. He said, by Allah, Allah only knows how long I have tried to reverse the cycle to become a normal human being, but I couldn't. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا And made the night as clothing. A covering and concealing to you by its darkness. So Allah Azza wa Jal resembled the darkness of the night as a cover, as a clothing. See, people need this darkness for their privacy. When a man wants to approach his, his spouse, and if it was all light all the time, the, the, the sense of privacy will be lost there. Uh, trying to sleep when the lights are on, for example, is a very difficult matter. And science proves that it's not a healthy matter. We have a, a doctor here we can... We can uh, uh, tell us about this. Uh, it, science proves that sleeping with the lights on or during daytime is not healthy. It's not enough. It's not sufficient as the sleep one takes at night. And then, وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشَ And we made the day for your livelihood. Allah Azza wa made this daylight so people can go out and earn their livelihood. If it was dark all the time, this becomes, if not impossible, like in our time, it's not impossible, but it's very difficult. But in their time, it was impossible to earn your livelihood if it was all dark all the time. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal, by mentioning the day and the night, and his ability to create the day and the night again proves his might, his ability, his power. The alternation of the day and the night is something with which Allah Azza wa Jal challenged the non believers and told them. If there was another creator, then let him alternate the day and the night. Allah says, لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَةٌ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لَفَسَدَتَ If there was two deities running the universe, it would have been ruined and corrupted. But it's only Allah. Then, وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبَعًا شِدَادًا And constructed above you seven strong heavens. In the science of astronomy, they, uh, they say the universe is infinite. Now all they discovered from the stars and the galaxies and this and that, all of that lies in the Asma al dunya the first one. And human minds 
are stunned. They stopped at a certain point and said, it's infinite. But Allah created seven heavens, not one. And in order to know the magnificence of Allah Azza wa Jal, you, know, you need to know the magnificence of this creation, the heavens. Now, as we said, as humans, we only know the first one. And for us, our minds stopped. Our equipment and tools couldn't get anything beyond a certain limit or a certain point. And then, infinite. There are many narrations describing the, uh, the heavens. The Prophet ﷺ in one of the narrations said that the distance, the traveling distance of one heaven is 500 years. And the distance between the first and the second is 500 years. And the second one is five, and so on until you reach the last or the seventh heaven. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is classified as authentic by Al Albani on the authority of uh, Abu Dharr al Ghifari, reported by Ibn Abi Shayba. He said, The seven heavens, when compared to this footstool, is like a small ring which is thrown in an open land. And open بِأَرْضٍ فَلَا فَلَا means a land that has no end in any of its directions. So can you imagine what a small ring would represent when it's thrown in an open land that's endless in all directions? Well, the seven heavens compiled together with the description given in the other narration represent nothing but a ring in an open land. And the greatness of the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal, when compared to the footstool, is likewise. So I want you to go down now, zoom down. This is the throne and this is the stool and these are the seven heavens. Wait a minute, there is earth. Wait a minute, there is something called mankind. You see how minute we are? We're not micro, we're simply... I don't know how to describe it, but you see, you see the greatness of this Lord that we worship? And this is the message that was sent to the Quraysh. You're nothing compared to the Creator. These heavens that you see above you and you see that it is great. All together represent nothing compared to the footstool. And this footstool represents nothing compared to the throne. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rising above his throne, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah that we are Muslims. Wallahi, if Allah Azza wa Jal did not bless us with any bounty except that he made us Muslims, it is enough and sufficient, alhamdulillah. Then Allah Azza wa says, وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَهَاجًا And we made therein a burning lamp, referring to the sun. Allah Azza wa resembled the sun to a burning uh, lamp. Uh, the sun is the source of light. The sun is the source of heat. And the sun is a means of plants to grow. Without it and the Arabs at the time when this was revealed knew the importance of the sun for all of these three matters. And again, this was a, a challenge for them, a message sent to them. You see this, who created this? 
So why do you deny him and deny his message? وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ مَا أَنْفَجَّاجَ And sent down from the uh, rain clouds pouring water. Thajjaja, meaning continuous and heavy. Continuous rain and heavy rain. Allah Azza wa Jal made water the source of life for all things. As He says in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ And we made from water everything living or we made life for everything due to water. Allah Azza wa Jal brings a dry soil or, or land, brings it back to life, grows plants, fruits, trees, flowers, greenery, after it's been dead, dry. Allah is telling them, just like He is able to bring life from death, He is able to bring you back to life after your death. لِنُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا that we may bring forth thereby rain and vegetation. Again, by the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, and by virtue of this rain that He sends down, you get your vegetations and you get your greens, without which you go hungry and starve to death. وَجَنَّاتٍ أَلْفَافَ And gardens of entwined growth. You see, have, for those who have been in different parts of the world, you can, you can go in, in some areas in a, in a small square and find flowers, huge trees, small trees, fruitful trees, not fruitful. Who created all of that to grow? And I'm not talking about man-cultivated gardens. No, I'm talking about areas, forests, where you see this, and there was no interference, no man work, none whatsoever. It is the Creator who created that. Again, another message sent to them, the one who's able to grow all of this without your interference is able to grow you back from death, bring you back in, from death, resurrect you back from death, and more certainly is capable of holding you to account and give each his recompense. Subhanakallah, <laughs> Muhammad,